Well, good morning and welcome. This is Morning Mail for Monday, February the 7th, 2022. So good to be with you this morning. I trust and pray that your weekday work week has gotten off to a good start. And it is Monday morning. We're going to begin our time together this morning, as always, with prayer. And then we'll get back into looking at Colossians chapter 3. Gracious Father, thank you so much for the day that you blessed us with. For the past night's rest, we look forward to the opportunities of this day. Thank you for the privilege and the blessing of worship yesterday, and we pray, Father, that as we came together, that you were honored and glorified, that your name was exalted, that we were encouraged that everything that we did was in spirit and in truth. Thank you so much, Father, for the opportunities of worship, for the opportunities like this this morning to uh, spend just a few moments reflecting upon your word, that we might be uh, all encouraged that as we seek to serve and to do your will. Father, there are so many that are in need of our prayers and we know that you are aware of the circumstances of each and every one because you care, because you are our God, our Creator. Bless them, Father, and help us to do what we can to be able to be a blessing to them. Father, we're so grateful for Jesus who came and gave his life. And we pray, Father, that we might be instrumental in spreading the gospel and making others aware of what Jesus has done. We thank you for the Bible. We pray all of this in the name of Jesus. Amen. John H. Starkey was a violent British criminal. He murdered his wife and then was found guilty of that crime and duly executed. Not being a religious person, Starkey had no minister to officiate at his funeral. The officials responsible for conducting Starkey's funeral found a minister who was willing to perform the service. When the day came, that minister faced a mean or as mean and hostile a crowd as he had ever seen in his life. But his first words stopped them and held them. John H. Starkey never had a praying mother. The relationship that exists in the home between parent and child is critically important. The home is the basic unit of our society. And what goes on inside the four walls of our homes shapes the destiny of our nation. In an age in America, when men and women are older when they have their first child, when modern contraceptives virtually eliminate so-called unwanted children, one would think that children are growing up in almost idyllic homes. However, that is far from being the case. A society that has to ask, Did you hug your child today? Or, It's 10 o'clock. Do you know where your children are? It's not doing something right in its homes. Paul continued his discussion of the new man lifestyle by giving some insights how to strengthen the home and make it a fortress of blessings. Like his counsel to husbands and wives we saw last week, his remarks are succinct, direct, and practical. First, to children. Paul writes in Colossians 3 verse 20, quote, 
Children, be obedient to your parents in all things, for this is well-pleasing to the Lord. End quote. The first thing young people want to know is what this word children means. How old do you have to be before this verse no longer must be followed? Well, the truth of the matter is that the Greek word is general and was understood to refer to any age. I mean, after all, when do you stop being your parents' child? Basically, Paul meant that anyone who, was, who is still under parental guidance, biblically speaking, as far as this verse is concerned, you stop being a child when you go out and establish your own independence. As long as you live at home, as long as your parents are responsible for your actions, as long as you are under their provision and their leadership, one command is for you. Be obedient to your parents in all things. Now, the word obey is a simple yet graphic word in the original language. Two Greek words were combined to create one word. From one of these Greek words, we get our English word acoustics, which means to hear. The other Greek word is a preposition signifying under. What the Holy Spirit is telling young people is this. Children, get under the authority of your father and your mother and listen to what they tell you. In Romans chapter 1, verse 30, Paul described the vices of the paganistic culture that he saw all around him. One of the identifying marks he listed is that they are, quote, disobedient to parents, end quote. The Bible also records in chapter 3, verses 1 and 2 of 2 Timothy, quote, but realize this, that in the last days, difficult times will come. For men will be, and then Paul gives a whole list of things, including disobedient to parents. If you are a young person and a Christian, one thing that should set you off from your friends is that you have a willing spirit to obey your parents. You say, well, <laughs> you, you just don't know my parents. You ought to hear some of the stupid rules that they want me to follow. That's not the issue. Paul makes no exceptions. He just lays down one requirement, obey your parents in all things. Now notice here, the reason you are to do this Quote, for this is well-pleasing to the Lord, end quote. Why should you obey your mom and dad? Not because they are the right kind of parents. Not because the rules that they lay down are right and make sense to you. Not even because of the great love you have for them. The reason you ought to obey your parents is because this is the way God set it up from the beginning. This is his standard, his pattern, and it delights the heart of God when he sees you live out your new life in Christ this way. 
Now, second, Paul addresses fathers when he writes in verse 21, quote, Fathers, do not exasperate your children that they may not lose heart, end quote. Now, that word translated fathers is in its plural form, and it more appropriately could be rendered parents. See Hebrews 11.23 as an illustration. This charge is not directed solely to fathers, but to fathers and mothers. The father and the mother have a responsibility in properly relating to their children. Thus Paul actually wrote, Parents, stop exaggerating your children in order that they might not become discouraged. The way parents relate to their kids should motivate proper behavior, not thwart it. The way adults violate this teaching is legion. Let me suggest a few and see if you do not find yourself somewhere. We ignore their feelings and thoughts. Children experience a great deal of frustration and resentment when they think that their parents are uninterested in their opinions and their feelings. Your child may want to share with you something as simple as an experience in art class that day. But when you send him away, unheard, because you do not have the time or the inclination to listen, he concludes that his own ideas are stupid and unworthy of expression. Children can become so discouraged that they decide that they are neither loved nor lovable. We dishearten our children through grapes of wrath. That is, words or comments that foster hate and resentment in a child's spirit. Go into any department store and listen to the conversations going on around you between parents and children. The grapes of wrath are found in parents' insults. You are a disgrace to your school. You are certainly no credit to this family. Third, we can crush a child's spirit through unrealistic expectations. We live in a high-paced, pressurized world. Things are changing constantly. That computer program that we bought last month is already out of date. The pressure to achieve on the job is relentless. Expectation levels are high, and we pass that pressure on to our children. What they used to be expected to do at age 14, we now expect them to do at age 10. The pressure to grow up and live like an adult robs them of the joys of childhood and leaves them discouraged because they cannot perform up to our level of expectation. Fourth, we can exhibit overprotection. Smother your child. Fence him in. Never trust her. And always wonder if they are telling you the truth. Never give them opportunity to develop their own independence. And in time, your child will begin to resent you and become very angry with you. Fifth, we discourage them through favoritism. If you want to fill your child with despair, always compare him 
with the other children in the family who do better than he does. It is irritating for a child to be less than an individual accepted in his or her own right. To always be elevated or evaluated in light of someone else's accomplishments. Six, a failure to have consistent rules and standards in the home frustrates children. Whether your child is six or 16, when he is left without rules to which obedience is required, he cannot handle that liberty. Though he will say he hates the rules, knowing what the standards are will give him a sense of security in a constantly changing world. So, draw some lines and let your child know what the bounds of acceptable behavior are. 7. Neglect is a simple way to discourage them. King David is a classic example. David neglected Absalom, and Absalom became the heartbreak of his life. Neglect your child, and you cannot win. Parents, if you are always gone to business meetings, club functions, and you do not find time for your children, that convinces them that they those things are more important to you than they are and you will deeply discourage them someday you will reap a harvest that you will not enjoy now we're going to have to stop here that is the negative side of what paul is saying here Tomorrow, I want us to consider some positive actions that we can take with our children and with our grandchildren to encourage them. And then we'll also introduce the next section of chapter 3. So for today, let's stop and, and uh, close our time with prayer. Gracious and loving Father, we thank you for all your blessings in our lives, and that includes our children and our grandchildren. Truly, children are a gift from, from you, from God. And we thank you, Father, for the privilege and opportunity that we have to be parents and grandparents and even perhaps great-grandparents. Help us, Father, that we might work with our children, that we might not exasperate them, and discourage them, but that we might be those that encourage by our example, by our love, by our consistent actions and rules that we set down for them. What a responsibility. Bless us, Father, through this day now as we go about our activities and help us to always seek to know you and your will. In the name of Jesus, amen. Well, folks, I hope you have a great Monday. Make it that way. And uh, Lord willing, we'll be back here tomorrow morning at 10 o'clock for another session of Morning Mail.